Jay McCall reporting live from the kitchen. It was farmer's market day at the Riverview Farmer's Market up the Heights, and that means we've got steak going on tonight. So I was at Harry Kelsey's last night, couldn't bring Cynthia, got to enjoy some excellent steak. So we've got potatoes going. These are from Allstead Farms. Uh, there's also going to find Stony Brook Farms up there. They're down in the Hoboken Uptown Farmer's Market later. We got bags of spinach here. Uh, this is about four bucks for a big old bag of spinach. We're going to saute it up in a bit. And what we got going on right now in the oven, just to give you a peek, this is about ready to go. We got a reverse dry sear Delmonico steak. Why do they call it Delmonico? It's got the no bone in it. That would be, uh, I don't know, maybe a bone and ribeye or something, but uh, this is what Arthur's used to serve. And after the Delmonico Steakhouse, you're seeing we're reading on the thermo pen mark two here, about 104 uh, Fahrenheit. That's what we're using on this thermo pen here, not Celsius. I do like to know what, what I'm actually dealing with here. Um, and this is from the Series Eats recipe. You're going to take the uh, ribeye, or sorry, whatever you're working with here, and uh, basically bring it up to that in a dry sear, um, reverse dry sear, sorry, in an oven. The oven's about 250 right now. And uh, now we're gonna get this, switch it over, get these potatoes back into the oven. Uh, let's finish them on a high roast or just keep them warm because I think they're actually ready to go. Tried one of those earlier. Let me check one out right now. They're actually pretty tasty, pretty hot. Threw some thyme on here, some salt. We got some unsalted butter ready to go in the pan. You're not gonna get a fond when you do this, but you also don't have to let it rest. It's gonna be ready to go right into the pan and eat. Uh, it's got a nice dry crust on it. And um, we'll have this, uh, just be back after a short commercial break. We're gonna zip ahead here and uh, show you the finished result once it's in the pan. We're back, that steak's gonna get ready in a second, but right now we're gonna throw some of this uh, spinach in the pan, get it get started in our carbon steel wok. Thanks here to Rusco for this. Uh, we got some olive oil with some garlic in there. I'm uh, just gonna get that ready. That's been kind of seasoning the olive oil there. We're gonna throw a little bit of salt into this, uh, season it well nicely, throw that in there. And the spinach, we're just gonna get this up to a nice temp here. And Hopefully, if, if your pans are well seasoned, you're not gonna get any, should be naturally nonstick. There should be no need to use an actual nonstick pan. Anymore. So we're just gonna get this up here. And this is this has seen some action here. So this, this wok is definitely, definitely works in this kitchen. Pardon for the jiggle right there. All right, and these guys are going in. There's gonna be a lot of, whoa. Now this is gonna shrink down. Uh, so that's why you can never have too much spinach. You go to a steakhouse, you get a full bowl of spinach. They're probably dumping in at least a half a pound of spinach in there. Okay, this, we're just gonna let it cook down here. Give it a toss. I'm gonna to wait to season at the end. It'll be a little premature now. I don't think the salt will get evenly distributed anyway. And we're just doing this over some high heat. And once it's fully up here, we're gonna turn it down to a simmer. Someone's at the door. Milo's gonna go berserk in a second. So we'll come back when this is shrunk down a bit. And hello. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, there he is. There he is. Just gonna wake up the baby. Okay, okay. Starting you can see it's already shrinking down here. It's coming down. And we'll be back. I wasn't lying, that spinach is pretty shrinking and now we're ready for some kosher salt. Uh, diamond or the other one, I, I mix them up all the time. One's better than the other, but just a little bit of salt in there. And I'm just gonna stir this up. And see that garlic, garlic's doing work here. Uh, once this is ready, you just I think it's it's fairly fine right now. They're gonna they're gonna shrink a little bit more. You don't want to overcook the spinach at all. Just get it to this nice consistency. Look at that shrunk down. That's beautiful. We're just gonna cap this off and put it off to the side here. And this is still hot. I almost touched the hot cast iron. So we're gonna switch this off to the side right now. And too much on the stove here right now. We're gonna crank this baby up and get it to a nice hot simmer. Uh, hot simmer, sorry. Get it boiling hot before we throw in a little bit of butter and put the steak back on there. Be right back in a second. And we're back. Just. Doing about a tablespoon of butter there. I had two, so took one out. And we got another one ready to go in the pan here. Now this is gonna start sizzling up pretty hot there. And we're just gonna throw it around the pan. And keep an eye on it, you don't want this butter to burn. And that's just beautiful. We're just running around right there. Gotta get this up to a nice hot, 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 hot. Cause you want that steak. It's already burned up to temperature. Uh, so I mentioned I left it in the oven for about 25 minutes. I uh, brought up the internal temp 104. That'll be enough for a medium rare, uh, as long as you get a good sear on it. And uh, alternative to sous vide style, but that's we don't have the equipment for that right now. So the reverse drives here are very accessible as long as you have an oven that can go down to a lower temperature. So we were at 250 uh, for this one. Let's so say we got a nice foam here, and that's when you're about to go in. And we're going to take the steak. The steak is eager to get onto that pan. There we go. And I don't, don't quite remember the farm. I'd have to look in the garbage can for what this was. I should have done this differently. Um, but they're up at the Riverview Farmer's Market almost every week. We're gonna throw this in the pan. Oh, there we go, and that's in there. So now you're gonna wanna keep an eye on it. It's not gonna be in there for too long. We just wanna get the outside. The inside should already be pretty well cooked. So again, you're not, 
this isn't like if you were starting originally in the pan, or you'd run it the whole way through. Uh, it's gonna be in there for just, just a minute or two, just to get that nice crust on the outside. And you could also flip it over on its side. So we've got a wooden spatula here, these are great. And you're gonna get, that's what you kinda want there, right there. Just get the, the outside with a nice crispness to it. I'll probably do this a little bit, a little bit longer. Uh, it's already been seasoned. We did a uh, salt and pepper uh, before it went into the oven and that kind of dries out, gives you that nice crust. So that's why you're not getting a fond with this. So if you do want a pan sauce, you're gonna have to make that separately. Uh, but we're just gonna crank up the heat a little bit more here. Uh, and just again, keep an eye on the butter. You do not want that butter to burn. I'm not one, I always fail when I make brown butter. I don't know what I'm doing. And also out in brown would yell at me because I'm moving the steak. I shouldn't be moving the steak. I should just be letting it sit uh, and right there. But what can I say? I'm, I'm excited about this. Uh, it's currently 8.17 p.m. I believe I'm sleeping. Oh, okay. See, too excited. Just got to calm down. When you're cooking steak, just be chill. Just be cool, man. Be jive. Be cool. So we're just going to let that sit for a bit. Maybe we'll edit this out in post. I don't know. I got really nothing to talk about today. It was a really busy day. We went over to Bob White at the counter. Uh, tried to go to Liberty State Park, and that was um, ridiculous. There was so much traffic there. I didn't even know there was an Amazon facility. I was trying to beat traffic going the back roads there. And uh, we decided to go back to the Bob White counter, check out the 9-11 Memorial, where we've gone with uh, Pratik Mavani before. Just in the waterfront. Uh, it was a nice scene there. Oh, okay, that's that's lovely there. This is going to be a lovely Christmas. And don't overcook it, because the inside, remember, the inside is already ready to go. And where's my thermopen? I'm missing, oh, there it's back there. I just want to check on the inside. Okay, it's a little 108, 108 there, 117. So 126 on the end with the fat pocket, that's fine, that's fine, 135. All right, just keep an eye on it. And this is, I want to say this is a little bit over an inch thick. Uh, and anyway, after we stopped by Torico ice cream, and uh, that was lovely, they have an avocado flavor. Didn't have the ube today, uh, but they also had, uh, Cindy got lychee and the butter pecan. She loves the butter pecan. Cliff's ice cream, I can, uh, in a previous episode, their butter pecan, I forgot what was the problem with it, they used salted pecans. Chiricos, just raw, chopped up, uh, trinier pieces and no salt. You don't really want salt in a butter pecan. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry to Stefan, um, who likes, uh, Stefan also just a nickname for his big garnishes on cocktails, I'll explain that later. Uh, but Stefan over in London pointed out, he's like, I should have done a video at Torico, I'm sorry, because after the Cliff's ice cream. So he asked, wanted to know if I'm gonna go to every ice cream place in the state. Um, probably not, I'm not big on ice cream, but but I'll definitely do a video at some point at Torico, because they got a lot going on there, it's great. Okay, I think this guy's ready. We're gonna go back to the, to the resting. And the sides are ready as well. This is a good thing. And we're just gonna throw this up here. Cool, I'm gonna let that rest on here because I pan is back in the oven with the, uh, the little potato guys. And uh, we'll cut into this in a second and show you what it looks like, but um, I'm pretty excited. We're back, Milo smells something, which means the steak is on the counter here. And just got this off here. Uh, we got a nice little edge here is the fat cap. So I'm gonna slice it, try and look for the grain here and it's kind of hard to find out. I might have to see if it's, uh, looks like it's going that way. So let's try, we're gonna try this way. Maybe I'm not doing this right. Uh, I was resting just for just for about a minute here. I'm gonna upgrade to a sharper knife here. Uh, and this is the uh, Mercer, this is a bread knife actually, but it's probably the sharpest knife I've got here. So I just wanna make sure I do a good cut on this. And let's see what the inside looks like. There it's, um, I think it's gonna be satisfactory for Cindy. The end here is probably uh, definitely a little more well done. I'm just gonna cut some some side pieces right here. I'll just get a few to plate this up for her because she's been she's been waiting for quite a while. Uh, I is back there having a conversation about something. My my Mandarin is not good enough to deduce what they're talking about right now. But uh, I just brought back some boiled peanuts. Not my favorite. I mean I've I've had them before, but um over from flushing. Okay, let's let's take a look at this and. Um, it looks pretty good. We're gonna plate this. So we got some spinach here. We got some of the potatoes. Just gonna lay these here. Um, I think these pieces will be fine. She usually just asks me to take this back into the kitchen. So I, leave, I do leave the pan hot in case it's too rare. And uh, I do like my, my steak rare. I mean, is there any other way to eat it? But um, uh, we don't eat beef a lot, but when we do, you know, it's good to get um, get good good quality steak. I mean, don't, um, if you're gonna do it and you're gonna embrace that carbon footprint, then at least get a quality piece of steak here. We got some old salt. I've had this for at least 10 years. This is some um, uh, La Seigneur de, I, I don't even know, but Florida, it's, it's French. Um, if Noelle were here, she would correct me on the pronunciation. So we're just going to do a little bit of that, just a little bit on the inside there for the salt. Uh, just a little bit of that. It's got some nice butter in the pan already, so it's got some of that. And uh, I don't want to over-season here. We could always add some more later. Uh, but there you go. And uh, that's a dish we're working with here. Uh, we'll see what uh, Cindy's uh, prospects are. But I'm going to be excited. I'm going to finally sit down and probably crack open a... Why don't I just do that now? It's been a hell of a day, let me tell you. 
And we still got some of this crappy stuff from the tasting episode, some Coke Starlight. So let's see if this the taste improved any. Not just as weird as I remember. So Coke Starlight, just as weird as I remember. Uh, that's my takeaway for that. Uh, so thanks for joining us. Um, have a good Memorial Day tomorrow. I'll be probably making a, a leg of lamb that I got from Costco. Pretty excited about that. And uh, stopping by and jumping up and grabbing this steak in the meantime. But have a good weekend. Bye-bye.